The more hits we play, the more hits we get. URLradio.net, Stacey Sturm, Woman Power Hour, and in the studio with me today, our doctor, Women's hey. Empowerment Hour doc, Jer, is in. How's it going, Jer? Well, absolutely fantastic. I missed your smiley face, Aww. but I hear you were dancing. Yes. Mm. I am, um, I'm coaching the St. Mary St. Eeks. Oh. The dance and, team. So, And what are, you, what are you teaching? What kind of routine are you going to have? You, I don't know. I think it's competition. Be, yeah, we do Ooh. go to competition, but it's not till like mm. February. Oh my gosh! So it takes a while. It's a long, long season. Oh yeah, February. yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm coaching the um, the junior high St. Teeks, and we're I think we're going to be doing mostly modern jazz <laughs> kind of routines. Yeah. So how long of it's going to be like a fifteen minute, half hour? Nope. Actually, the the routine only has to be between two minutes and two minutes and fifteen seconds. Oh my gosh, yes. that's even less. Good. Yes. <laughs> So I'd like to teach them two, but they can yeah. only compete with one. But it would be mm-hmm. nice if they could practice mm-hmm. two. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Sometimes I, I can't remember. It used to be like 10 minutes, 10, 15 or more than that. Yeah, I think much. our routine when I was in high school was mm-hmm. like five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Oh. I think that's what we had. It was mm-hmm. a, it, you, you can max out at five minutes or mm-hmm. six minutes, something like that. So now yeah. my next question is how many people are young adults are going to be in this routine, you got to get in About sync. 20 or 20? 22. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> it's is. easy to take a small group and do it. But yeah, right. the bigger the group, yeah. The harder it is to make sure everybody does stuff <laughs> together. Together, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's that in sync thing. Yeah, it yeah, is, the whole yeah. working we can together do thing. Stuff. Or maybe you can that's like tough. have four and then four and four. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, and I think that's what part of the routine is, is that mm-hmm. too, where we'll have like half of them do this and then half of them mm-hmm. do that. And then there's like ripples and contagions and things of what you call oh. it. And so it's, I can't wait to see it. I, I, like, I want to, uh, in, I would love to. I will come. make sure I invite you because yes. summer dance is on it yes. too. That's the Ooh. reason I'm coaching is because I needed a coach and mm-hmm. they knew that I'd coached before mm-hmm. and I'd taken years of dance and taught dance mm-hmm. and stuff. So they said, would, would you consider doing it? And yeah. I said, oh, and my, but then summer, because I don't want to coach my daughter. I don't. That's just, they such, just it's such don't a conflict. Get it if you coach them. No. And, and yeah. I, you know, I said that's probably mm. only going to lead to trouble. Yep. But then Barb, the gal that sort of runs the, the program, she runs the varsity and the junior varsity and the, mm. and the junior high and stuff. She said, you know, no, it's not a big deal. I coached my daughter for years and it worked out fine. And, don't worry about it. So then, so, but Summer was really like, please, mom, please do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> do it, please. Oh, she wanted you yeah. to do it. Oh, well, then that was fine. So I said, okay, then you I'll, got, I'll do you it. You got her, her, her consent, and, yeah, and that's important. I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I said, okay. Yay. So then, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. So they had, a, they had their first camp last week, and then they have some skills technique camps coming up mm-hmm. in July. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get dancing again. Me and my granny hip, though, we have to work on this a little bit. I have <laughs> <laughs> my hip pops out. <laughs> your, oh, for, oh, your hip pops out. Yeah, it does. I thought you said you'd like to do hip hop. <laughs> I do. I do that. Actually, that's what I taught most classes mm. in was hip hop. Mm. I probably feel less comfortable with contemporary, which mm-hmm. is probably what I'm going to be doing a little bit of contemporary, a little bit of jazz, but yeah. Maybe the junior high girls, they just can't do there. the, yeah, they just can't, there might be some funky parts I can slip just, it in there. Yeah, you could, you could throw it in there. They won't even know you could throw a little hip hop. Yeah, well now lately I'm, I'm teaching hip out is what oh. I'm doing. <laughs> hip pop out, hip pop out. That's what I'm, that's what you I'm teaching invent there. a new, a new dance. Oh hip-hop, my hip-hop word. Out. Ooh, that'd be fun. Oh. If you could get famous for it, you know. I could. Yeah. Hip pop mm-hmm. dance for yeah. all the people where, that have bad <laughs> hips that pop out all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's too funny. So what are we talking about today? <laughs> oh, I know. That sounded more exciting. Well, we're going <laughs> to we're, we're gonna talk um, about, well, this could work into our topic about support. Support. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of people find, you know, when they grow up and they go out and leave their intimate families they have a hard time finding support some people don't get support from their family Mm -hmm. and things like that so i just wanted to say that you know this support really has to do only with yourself because um yes it is lovely and wonderful if you have a family that you know support you like your daughter supporting you in this yes Mm -hmm. she actually wanted you to do it yes and so she's going to support you it's not like she doesn't want you to but then if you have a family that would give you the support, you, you'd be surprised how much more you can succeed and go on in life just, just by having support. 
Yeah. It's so valuable. But now I want to talk to people who aren't getting support, who yeah. feel lonely, who feel left out. They feel like, oh, I'm not part of my family. You know, my family is not supporting me or my work isn't supporting me and I'm right. doing all this. So we can do a little something um, to uh, support yourself. Okay. Because if you support yourself, that is all really you need because it's all just in what you think about it. And and I do want to say, like, um, a lot of people, when when you support yourself, you really are making your se- inner self happy. And and when that gets addressed, that is really your soul self. So okay. it you actually have desires that you want to do, you like to do. If something makes you laugh and you're having fun, you know, really, that's what you should do. Oh. So this is kind of part of support. Okay. Support is if... You're doing, let's say you do a sport. You don't okay. like f- playing maybe volleyball because it doesn't feel right for you. But you could play basketball or tennis and your body enjoys it immensely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Then you should do that particular activity because that's your soul self telling you that's what's best for you. I think people make a lot of mistakes too. Like um, <laughs> they, uh, they do something because their friends do it. You know yes. what I mean? So yes. they'll join basketball or volleyball mm-hmm. or whatever it might be because their friends do it. Yes. When they really connect with something else, but that's mm-hmm. just not in their head what they think they should yeah. do, even though they know in their heart that that's something that they're really right. good at. Because they're getting support from their friends, and so that's where they're going that direction. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to say the support you really want is your support, you supporting yourself. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about some, may, some things you can do in your home to build your support. Okay. Because we went through this whole thing, uh, I think we've been talking about it all along, that your thoughts are what you are. And if you, mm-hmm. think, if you think you're great, you are great. I mean, after all, I mean, how could you not be great if you're thinking you're great? Yeah. Or you say, hey, I did a great job. Well, you did a great job. Because, or as long as you think you're yeah. great, who cares what really exists? Yeah, as long yeah, as you think so, you're great, you're great. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So um, if you have a problem with, with, uh, with this part of you, well, I'm going to give you some things in your house. You can switch around, try them out, tell me how you felt about it, and you can, of course, uh-huh. Okay. Come back to your York Radio <laughs> and give us an update and if any of these Let things know, helped. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Okay. So the major one in your house would be the headboard of your bed. Oh. Yeah. Believe it or not, it represents your brace of support that takes you along your journey. So um, it also, you will get more of this support feeling Um, you know, like uh, from your family and friends and community if you have a a good headboard. And that's one with solid back and pillows do not come for a headboard, (laughs) even though they can puff up and make a headboard. Yes. Um, The, um, uh, let's see, there are other things. Let's see. I wanted to, there's another thing, you can hang things on the wall. You could put a picture there. You could put mirrors there. But they don't uh, give you that um, security. The other thing is there's a lot of beds out with slots in them. Yeah, mine is like a wrought iron, so it's got slots. Oh, it's got slots. Well, maybe we're not talking about that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Uh, you, I, okay. I'm strong enough. You can give it to me. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so, But you are also secure in your life. If you're not yeah, secure pretty. in your life and you get slots... It can, it can give you a breakup point of not a solid uh, area and it, it make you feel insecure. Oh. So um, sometimes if it's too slotty, too many, like, like <laughs> look like slotty. a jail bars. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about a piece. I'm talking about like, like real close together so you can't get your hand out through them. Right. Um, you, could, uh, you could get the feeling that you're not quite relaxing. And, oh. and you have fear that uh, your support will fail you because there, there isn't a solid uh, place for you to generate. So when you sleep, that's important to have a place to lay down, be worry-free, and, and have a good night's sleep, okay. not having to be uh, woken up with problems. So now if you have a headboard in the back and it has shelves on it with alarm clock, knickknacks, you got a lamp up there... Okay, so you got to remember now all electrical things omit um, that electromagnetic radiation. Mm-hmm. And then when that happens during the night, 
your, not only that, your support will leave you. You'll feel like you, you are lost. You lost your oh. backup because it kind of like drains your energy. Hmm. So you can actually wake up in the morning and feel like you've never slept. Oh. So if you have too much clutter, unnecessary things behind your bed and your bed board, if it's one with shelves. And, so, and then also if this headboard comes cluttered, if you have one with the shelves and things in it, so will your dreams. So you, and if your headboard gets very dusty and you don't keep it clean, mm-hmm. you may not be thinking clear about something. Oh. So the headboard is a very important part because that's, you know, you spend uh, 20% of your life sleeping. Yeah. So you need the back of you supported okay. and the foot end. Now the foot end can't be too high that you can't see over. Or that's not any good either. So you want to have something to support your feet. Only if uh, you have really uh, feelings of um, not belonging and... Um, I remember you said if if kids are like afraid to sleep in their bed too, that's another thing Mm -hmm. is once you put a footboard on there, they tend to feel a little bit more secure in there. Yes. Especially for kids. Now we're talking Mm -hmm. about adults. Adults need support. You, you think you're not, you're uncomfortable at your job or you support yourself when you're sleeping. When you wake up in the morning, you feel supported. Okay. Okay. So I want people to try that if, if this is something they don't have, so they can let me know how, um, how that happens. So. Okay, if you don't have a headboard, you may feel like no one, you have no one to count on. So if you're feeling like there isn't anyone you can count on, check and see if you have a headboard. Or you probably would know. <laughs> You'll know if you have a headboard or not. Okay, because it gives you the sense of strength and purpose. And um, also, when you don't have a headboard, it makes you feel lonely. You know, like you feel like you're all alone and... Um, now, put in your bed by a window. A window is not a headboard because if you have a headboard by a window, you know, you, you can feel like uh, you don't sleep good there either. You feel like your energy is going right out the window. Oh. Okay, so now um, if you have a headboard that has slats in it and you are feeling insecure and you're having insecurity problems, you can take like um, real nice tapestry material. You can weave it in between the slots. You could do ribbons. You could put oh, uh, tapestry on it. So you could do something. It isn't like it's only if you have these feelings. Right. That I'm, I'm not not everybody gets to the point. I mean, if you have a great backup system, you're not going to have insecurity in your support. Right. You know, you have family there for you. You have great support with your family. I know, uh, Stacy. So yeah. So I don't have to worry yeah. about having an open headboard. <laughs> right. You won't. You won't feel that. But if you're somebody <laughs> that is having that problem right now, then you know you can look around and you could change that and try it and see if this is going to change how you sleep at night. A lot of people don't sleep. They say I can't sleep, and then I say, Well, you have a headboard on your bed. And they go, No, but I've got a bunch of pillows. I got like a headboard. Well, you know. It's not going to work. So if you want to, you need to make yourself worry-free and safe when you go to bed at night. And then you'll have a good night's sleep. Okay. So then we're going to talk a little bit about the children's room. Because a lot of times children need support. And sometimes you're not sure how you can help them. You can tell them words. So, of course, you already mentioned the bed, um, Mm -hmm. Stacy. So we don't need to do that. So now, if a child's room, let's say you live in a house where the L comes out in the bedroom. So when you come to the front door, the bedroom okay. is extended out beyond the house. Okay. 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 Now, you know, so if this is a younger child, um, they'll have a lot of fears. They won't want to go to the bed at night. They'll be afraid to go in there and sleep hmm. because this is an extension beyond the house. You know, it shouldn't be a thought because you're thinking, well, it's part of the house. But right. we actually are are very sensitive people and if there's anything going on energetically and we are energetically we pick up on it especially a, a child and if if you have a room like that a child's in there and they don't go want to go in the room and play in the daytime then you'll know they're having problems oh. especially if they have nightmares and because what's happened when they go in that room is they feel separated and alone and and they're separated from the rest of the family so maybe you could put the office in there. I think a lot of people yeah. usually put an office in a, in a front bedroom rather than a child. Right. Okay, so if this is a room in your home and you can't, and you have a child and you can't move this child, you can put a mirror on the, closest, uh, on the closet uh, closest to the wall facing the house. 
you know, like that's the extension part of the house. And so it'll be okay. reflecting back to the child from that area, not from the outside wall of the okay. house, but in the inner wall. Mm -hmm. And then that will make them feel back connected because that mirror can reflect back that part of the house. Okay. You just put it on the closet door. And also then um, probably another thing you should would, could help in that room, if you had a room like that for your child, is uh, don't put any chairs to the backs facing the door. Turn oh, the chairs around yeah. so that so that the backs are facing the door. So that that's a disconnection. Makes you feel it's powerless. It's a psychological too, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dis disconnection from the other house. Okay. okay. This is just a uh, little things you can try. You can just try them out. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, let's see. If you have any uh, feelings of. Um, Let's let's say about a child doing over a garage. Let's say you have a bedroom over a garage okay. door. The garage is underneath, and you have a bedroom on top. If you put uh, your kids in there, they could they will develop uh, health issues and feelings of inferiority. Oh, because they won't feel they'll feel like they're less because they're not being able to be grounded. And the garage holds pollutions. You know, we probably put our lawnmowers in there, paints and stuff. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, uh, everything is energy. It will eventually slowly rise up, you know, penetrate through the floor. And the, this child or whoever is in that room or will have dreams of falling. Ah. Yeah, so you could check your, your kid or your teenager if they're sleeping in a room like that. If they have dreams that think they're going to fall or they've been falling. So those are things happen when you have a room over a garage. A okay. So... If you can't move your child out of this room, we can always do something, too, so you can make it feel anchored back to earth. Uh, if it's an older child, you can have them go out and pick rocks with you. Get it like a medium-sized rock and put it in each corner, representing being grounded on the ground. Hmm. And, you know, our thoughts are, are what it is, and that can stabilize them, feel, feel grounded. Um, the other thing you can do is you can place a mirror under the bed, facing down okay so that is reflecting down away and they're like they're sitting on the ground so oh, these are the little things yeah. i kind of like you know give them a try and give us the results to see if you have anything like that now the other thing is if you have like a child sleeping down in a basement the ceilings are too low yeah that's a lot of basements mm -hmm. yeah so they can feel oppressed and they can that can lead to depression so here's some things you can do if you have a a too low of a ceiling in the bathroom. You can get lights in the corner and have them shooting up to the ceiling so that it makes the height of the room oh, I suppose, longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that can make that seem a lot higher ceilings. And if you're really having, you're worried and you think uh, someone's being depressed, you could put them in all four corners and that would really push the ceiling up because that pushing down is kind of like the same thing if I'm here in a room with a logs hanging over too low you feel like you know you're being repressed so that's the same thing that happens there this takes time for the human mind to um, let something affect them so if they're in there a while okay other thing in this basement room try to stay away from heavy furniture like big bulky heavy furniture make it lighter uh, oh. not so big fluffy stuff right mm -hmm. yeah, or heavy like a lot of metal and big thick wood that would make it feel lighter down there oh. okay so now another thing that um, these are all things that are supporting you now if you get this support it really makes a difference on, on yourself. If you come away every day in your home and you feel supported and you don't feel uncomfortable, it will make a difference how you are at work, how you play mm -hmm. with your friends, and how you are at school. So let's see. Another thing is like windows. Um, if you have an extensive exposure to windows, they can cause a difficult to sleep. A lot of people have lake homes where you, you want to see that lovely view, so you want to see everything, so you have like windows on the whole wall. But now that's okay because you're not like living there 74, you know, 365 days a week. Right. If you did live in some place like that, you would probably want to have like curtains that you could. All you need to do for your mind, because we're very intelligent, is we need a break. We need a break from all of that. All that glorification is only is glorifiedly good, but not for 
like for 365 days a week. So right. you would want to sometimes close that off to give your mind a break. Okay. And then it can bl- enjoy that glorification again. Because lots of times I know if you know people who love their lake home, they, they moved out there, and then after a while they got tired of living there. Well, they got tired of all of that view because it's just like so much. It does feel like you're sort of on display because we have that mm-hmm. whole wall of windows too mm-hmm. in our area. It's like the corner and then into the mm-hmm. where it's floor to ceiling. And it's like, mm-hmm. it does seem like after a while, it's you're, like, you're sort of like on display. And, and it's gorgeous. And, and, it's beautiful and it's, on yeah. nice days. It's a bad mm-hmm. reminder than on yucky days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what you do is you want to take a break from it. And that is like have the capability to close it at yeah. times, which you know, then you got to figure out how to close it. But the point is, if you take a break from that, then when you do, again, you've got that renewed glorification feeling of what you have. Sure. Because that is ultimate. Mm-hmm. But, but after a while, it could be too much, and then you feel not supported. And then, you okay. get it, and then you'll start getting into that. And you'll find many other things that will bother you when you, one thing bothers you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because that, um, without, uh, without the headboard... You get uh, restless nights, you get health issues, too many window exposures, because actually the, the energy goes right out the window, and, and that's what happens. Of course, mm. if someone can prove we're not energy, that would help. <laughs> we don't have to worry that. <laughs> okay, now another thing of supports okay. is clocks. Oh, Clocks are okay. very supportive um, because they keep you ticking along in life. And everybody, mm. you know, you think about when you think about clocks, you need them to go to work, um, and you need you keep your schedule. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you have a clock in your home and it doesn't work and it's just on display, it will send messages that some part of your life is not working. Oh. So don't put a clock just for looks. It should function. Okay. Mm-hmm. And if something isn't working, fix the clock and see if things will start working in where, where you had problems with. So now I have a clock in a partnership area and your house isn't working. There's an indication that your partnership is not running smoothly. If that clock stops, go get it fixed. <laughs> That'd be the far Save right. Your you marriage. Fix it. Get it fixed. Yeah. Say uh, clocks in the home should be functioning, and if not, they should be removed. Especially if you're ending one in, a, in your wealth corner. You don't want a clock sitting in your wealth corner and right. it's not functioning. Because all things are just indication of our mind we're such clever people, we indicate exactly what we're feeling and what's going on and by just by moving around and setting things. And if we can handle a clock not functioning in our wealth corner, then we're saying something about ourselves that our wealth isn't right. And we may be thinking it and b- before, of course, you know how Einstein said, nothing happens until something moves. First yeah. you're thinking it, and then you've, then you've made something there mm-hmm. to symbolize it. And then... It'll happen on the physical level. Okay. Like you can build a house. Yeah. And then that's why we're talking about this, because that clock will give you support in our things. Mm. Okay. So my feel, So here's some of Feel better about yourself. Um, people, you, you notice sometimes when you, you're in your dining room, people come into your house, they always want to sit in the furthest corner away yeah, and, they, and they'll do it on uh, just do it naturally. They'll sit there and go, "Why are they sitting way over there? Sit over here in front." You know, how can I help you? Yeah. You're, you're over there, you're stuck in the corner. But the point is, it is for the human mind it is the most comfortable place that we like to sit because we feel best there. Hmm. So we'll generate and sit there. Um, if you're having problems with feeling not the best and supportive or insecure about yourself go sit in those far further seats away from the right hand of of your home Aww. so the, the the seat furthest from the door will give you confidence so try them back and forth sit over here over closest to the door in a conference and then the next time you're in a conference go sit the furthest away from the door in that chair just see what happens differently in that conference of, of uh, you being in a secure comfortable place so that would mm. be something that someone could check for themselves. That's a good themselves. experiment, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, it's called the command position. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so f- we talked about uh, mm-hmm. that one time before. But it's also a major part in s- making yourself see, feel supported. This is also, um, well, let's say if you have a child who's suffering from depression, especially a teenager, you could give them the bedroom that's in the command control. And t- until they became not depressed and then move them mm-hmm. out. But 
that could get them to the point of betterment by just stick them in there giving them the control point but do not put your teenagers in those control points because they will you don't want to give them any more control <laughs> no 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 you're right right yeah <laughs> but if you have your child in the control thing the furthest on the far side from a door and a bedroom that's way in the right which mm-hmm. should be the control of the family you can always put a piece of furniture in there that belongs to you maybe an artwork you did or something and, and make it ownership that you belong there you could okay. do that. Okay. And if you're really having a trouble feeling unsupported, then you could go into every room in your house and look what's in the furthest point from the door. Okay. And check that and change it or make it be yours in some way. And that can... Uh, so some people like really down and it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to do it when you are feeling down it's like when you're sick you know you don't take care of yourself so when you but this is in the subconscious mind if you're feeling unsupported and uncomfortable and and feeling down and it's hard to get help for yourself or call up the support doctor (laughs) you know (laughs) i just don't do those things so anyway okay and (laughs) in a home the bedroom should be the main focus for support Mm. so if you and of course you know we talked about the bed so yep uh, a lot of people don't like, uh, they want to know why you can't put a canopy bed over your bed. Look, you could be real supported canopy. No, I felt suffocated. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I have a lot oh. of asked that question. Well, how about if I put a canopy up? You know, won't I be yeah. supported? I'll be enclosed. But you're right. Actually, what happens is instead of it being a bedroom, yeah. the bed is a room. Yeah. And then, it, and then it became closed in. It does. Yeah. And then you don't have your support. Mm-hmm. Because the area becomes smaller, it's like being in a basement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, canopy beds would be very popular. You don't. You just don't <laughs> see them much anymore. No. Yeah. Once in a while, for young little girls, because they're short, and then that's and sometimes when your children are young, they still need that cuddle space. Yeah. And then it's good, but after that, once they start getting into school and things, that canopy beds mm-hmm. then are enclosing on their support too. It feels uh, confined. Yeah, we had mm-hmm. ours that lasted about. Oh, gosh, maybe two, three weeks. I'm like, i got to tear this down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's why, because mm-hmm. it's... Um, that would be why. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you did it all on your own, but, of course, you balanced. So <laughs> you can do those things, but some people aren't balanced, and they'll they never come know. to that conclusion unless, say, hey, give this a try. Right. So, oh, you did that because you did. didn't work. It didn't feel right. Yeah. Well, and I figure there's a reason that... That that canopy part unscrews is because <laughs> it must just drive some people crazy. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it eventually makes you feel not supported and yeah. repressed. It kind of like know. pushing down on you. Yes, and uh, you would never let yourself get to the point of getting depressed. Yeah, I don't know about that. Smart. Yeah. Now let's see. Um, do we? Um, oh, I could do one. How are we doing on time? We have about uh, three, four minutes. Oh yeah. Well, let me talk about the master bedroom. Okay. Master bedroom, because that's your most supported area. If you have a bathroom, of course, a lot of people have bathrooms and everything. Yes. Um, of course, the toilet is always draining away energy. So, like, if you feel like you wake up in the morning, you're so tired, like you say, oh, I'm never away, even went to bed. You know, you feel like you're still sleeping. Yeah. Um, check to see if your headboard is, or the top of the head of your bed is faced towards the toilet. Because that could take your energy. Oh. So when you're sleeping, you know, um, we re- we let our en- ourself relax. So yeah, we're not like holding our energy in. It's like relax. So that can happen because everything's energy. Water's energy. That's water in there, mm-hmm. and the drain energy will sabotage your health on all levels. So that's very very important. Never that have a sense. headboard facing oh, pipes of any kind of water. Okay, so that's a, a really good one. Okay, I think uh, I just wanted to mention that because that was important. <laughs> okay. Well, I know you have a happy thought. You always finish up with a happy thought. <laughs> yeah, I, of course. I don't want <laughs> anybody to take anything that we say wrong because there's always ways all around everything. Okay. So support. What a valuable need for every person. If you get verbal support from your family and friends or your work, these little twicks you can move in your life will be of little importance. But if you are a person who does feel the lack of support, be it in your family life or that daily job, then any, then any little change in movement would and can be of the greatest benefit. 
Where does this support come from? Well, it is our thought of it, what we think we bring to us. If we can move around physical items and or ourself in any given place or situation, then we can physically see it. This is something the logical mind is aware of. We know perfectly well why we changed something in our home or workplace or why the adjustment was made. We are very brilliant, you know. <laughs> the logical mind loves those challenges. I made this so, and so therefore it is. Yes, our lives are what we think, but, and yes, there is a but. There is still the process of living with everyone else's thoughts. One way to bring those thoughts out in our form, forefront is to change, rearrange, or add to our physical world. Not only do we have the thought of it, but now you will be able to see physically. You maybe can touch it and experience it with all our senses. This experience of our senses will make it so. If s somehow you felt unsupported, you can bring that support forth into your physical world by doing it in physical forms. Hey, there's your doctor giving you medicine. Sometimes we have too many thoughts and too many things going on in our lives. And one way to bring balance is to bring your thought out by doing something to represent it. Yes, you are aware of all the things in your mind, and it is of the great delight to release yourself of pieces here and there by putting them in the physical world where you can control. And in the process of controlling, you will feel self-worth and, oh, there is the support needed to carry you in a well-balanced and healthy life. Have a supported, balanced day, everyone.